I'm serious. World War II didn't just change borders and politics. It changed what's in your genes right now. Let's count them down. Number 5. That ballpoint pen. You probably have one somewhere on you, or at least nearby. In the 1930s, a Hungarian journalist named Laszlo Biro was annoyed that fountain pens kept leaking and smudging his work. He invented a pen with a tiny ball bearing that rolled ink onto paper. Clever, but not exactly world-changing. Then World War II happened. Biro fled to Argentina, and the British Royal Air Force had a problem. Fighter pilots flying at 30,000 feet found that fountain pens leaked everywhere because of the pressure changes. The ink would explode in their pockets mid-flight. The RAF heard about Biro's design and bought the patent. Suddenly, every pilot had a pen that worked at altitude, in cold, upside down, whatever. After the war, these pens flooded the market. Now we use over 14 million ballpoint pens every single day, and it's all because pilots needed to write their reports. Number four, the fabric your clothes are probably made from right now. Check the tag. Polystyne? Mylon? Some synthetic blend? That's war tech you're wearing. Before World War II, everything came from natural sources. Cotton, wool, silk, natural rubber. But when Japan captured Southeast Asia, the Allies lost access to natural rubber and silk. Parachutes needed silk, tires needed rubber. America was in trouble. So companies like DuPont went into overdrive, creating synthetic alternatives. Nylon was invented in 1938, but it really exploded during the war for parachutes, ropes, and tire cords. After the war, this miracle material that kept soldiers alive became stockings, then shirts, then everything. That moisture-wicking gym shirt you're wearing? Thank a parachute engineer. Your stretchy jeans? War material. We literally wear the innovation of desperate times. Number three, superglue. This one's my favorite because it was a complete accident. 1942, a chemist named Harry Coover was trying to make clear plastic for precision gun sights. He was working with cyanoacrylates, and he kept making this annoying substance that stuck to absolutely everything it touched. It ruined equipment, ruined experiments. It was useless for gun sights. He threw the research away. Six years later, he was working on heat-resistant airplane canopies and rediscovered the same sticky substance. This time, he realized what he had, a glue that bonded in seconds without heat or pressure. By the Vietnam War, surgeons were using it to close wounds in the field. Now it's in every junk drawer in the world. You've probably fixed a broken mug with it, sealed a cut, repaired glasses, all because someone failed at making gun sights. Number two, duct tape, or as soldiers called it, 100 mile an hour tape. The military needed a waterproof, strong, terrible tape to seal ammunition cases and keep moisture out of equipment. Johnson and Johnson's Permacell division created a cloth back tape with a rubber adhesive. It was strong, but you could rip it with your hands. It was waterproof. It stuck to anything. Soldiers started using it for everything, fixing jeeps, patching tents, temporary repairs on aircraft, even sealing wounds in emergencies. After the war, it moved into construction and heating ducts, which is where it got the name duct tape. Now, it holds together everything from car bumpers to space station repairs. NASA uses it on the International Space Station. There are entire books of duct tape hacks, all because someone needed to keep bullets dry in the Pacific theater. And number one, the GPS in your phone. This is the big one. Right now, you probably can't remember the last time you navigated somewhere new without your phone. That little map with the blue dot, that's military technology from World War II. During the war, radio navigation systems helped bombers find targets and ships navigate at night. After the war, this evolved. In the 1970s and 80s, the US military launched satellites for the Navstar GPS system. These satellites were designed to guide missiles and coordinate troop movements anywhere on Earth. Then in 1983, a Korean airliner accidentally flew into Soviet airspace and was shot down. 
President Reagan decided GPS should be available for civilian use. But here's the thing, it's still run by the US Space Force. Those satellites guiding you to the nearest coffee shop? Military hardware. We just get to use it for free. Every map app, every food delivery, every time you check where your Uber is, you're using a navigation system designed to win wars. So that's five things in your pocket right now that came from World War II. A pen that works at 30,000 feet, fabric from parachutes, glue from a failed gunsight experiment, tape that sealed ammunition, and GPS from military satellites. We carry the innovation of the most desperate time in modern history everywhere we go. War is terrible, but the technology it creates, that stuff never leaves us. It just finds new jobs. Check your pockets. History's in there.